The guy was riding a scooter. He noticed that the vending machine that the truck was carrying started to fall. He loves vending machines very much, so he tried to save him. But instead, he flew into a cliff. The guy opened his eyes and realized that he had survived. He tried to move, but his body wouldn't obey. Suddenly, he heard a sound that was actually his voice. In addition, he had heard these phrases many times. The guy concluded that he had turned into a vending machine. But on the other hand, this is impossible, it is unlikely that he could turn into a vending machine. He looked into the puddle and saw his reflection. The guy was glad that he had become his favorite thing. But a vending machine is the worst thing for rebirth. But nothing can be changed. The guy began to study his abilities. An assortment of goods came to his mind. As it turned out, he can change this assortment for points. Points can also activate new functions. The guy began to study his functions. He can sell any goods he has bought in his life. The guy decided to add milk tea to the assortment. He found out that for 10 yen they give one point. It turned out that the vending machine does not work from electricity, but at the expense of points. He spends one point per hour. He figured he needed to earn 24 points a day. However, he still has 900 points. Thanks to them, he will be able to hold out for a month. Suddenly, he was afraid that there would be no customers in this place and he would run out of all points. Suddenly, someone started coming out of the water. A large toy came up to the vending machine. She started looking at the vending machine. Suddenly, she started hitting him. It turned out that because of the blows, endurance decreases. If the endurance reaches zero, the device will fail. The guy started feeling sad because he couldn't do anything. Stamina can be replenished for points. The frog started calling someone. As a result, a whole squad of frogs came. The guy started urgently looking for functions that will help him protect himself. At this time, the frogs beat him and reduced his stamina. The guy was lucky and he found the divine protection function. He began to choose what kind of protection he should use. He found the barrier. That's what he needed. Having put up a barrier, he threw all the frogs away from him. The guy began to rejoice at the victory. But he noticed that the points began to be spent quickly. The frogs continued to attack the vending machine. The guy managed to survive. He recovered. He has 300 points left. It's only enough for 10 days, so he needs buyers. Not far from the device, the girl was looking for frogs. She had no strength left because she wanted to eat. She lost her lunch bag. The girl noticed the vending machine and approached it. He made a sound and the girl was scared. She realized that the device gives out products for coins. The guy spent 100 points to sell products for the currency of this world. The currency in this world was called OVA. The girl wanted to eat very much, so she decided to buy something. The device was activated. The girl decided to choose soup. The soup fell out and the girl took it out of the machine. The corn cream soup was very warm. The girl started to open it. The guy was very happy with his first sale. The cream soup turned out to be very tasty. The guy was happy. The girl began to look at other products in the vending machine. She bought tea with milk. She liked him very much too. The girl bought a few more products and the guy was able to earn points. The girl fell asleep. The guy decided to protect her with a barrier, because this is his best buyer. He was even able to take out the trash. The guy thought he was the kindest vending machine in the world. 
The girl woke up and went to the machine. The girl thanked him and he answered her. She concluded that he could talk. The girl realized that he could only voice phrases. The guy started using one phrase to show his agreement. It turned out that the girl's name was Lamis. She asked for his name, but he couldn't give it. Lummies asked if he was lonely here. The guy agreed. She offered to leave this place and go to her friend who studies magic subjects. The guy agreed. Then she picked it up. Lummies was very strong. She carried him. At one point she decided to take a break. Lummies was hungry again. She wanted corn soup again. But the guy decided to update the assortment. He added new products. Lamise decided to try the chips. They were very tasty. She couldn't stop. Thanks to Lamise, he earned more points. The guy decided to use the points and lower the price of water. They went on. When they arrived, Lamise placed the device at the guards. She said that the device gives out different goods for money. The guardian said that the main rule of the dungeon says that the found thing belongs to the person who found it. The guy realized that she was inside the maze on the first level. The guardian wanted to buy something. Lamise asked the vending machine for permission. He agreed. The guards really liked the food. They bought all the products from the vending machine. The guy was glad that his business was booming. Lamise carried the vending machine on. When she went into the alley, she noticed how the bandits were attacking the girl. She started hitting the bandits. The girl was surprised by Lamise's strength. Lamise returned home. Manami hugged her, the hostess was very worried about Lamise. Lamise started talking about the vending machine. She said he was very helpful. Then Lamise decided to take the device to a crowded place. It turned out that Lamise had spent all the money and she couldn't buy a teleport team. Manami said Lamise could work at the hotel. And they will leave the vending machine so that it attracts guests. So the guy ended up at the hotel. People really liked the vending machine. At night, Lamise takes the device to the guards. One of them said he was tired of drinks. Then the guy decided to update his assortment. The guardian was very surprised. Hot food appeared in the machine. The guardian wanted to try it. It turned out to be very tasty. It became the guardian's favorite dish. In a few days, hot food has become very popular among people. The sports drink also sold well. The guy did not sell hot food at noon. The boy was approached by a girl whom Lamis had saved in an alley. The vending machine made a sound and she was scared. She stuck out her tongue and ran away. Lamise decided to give the guy a name. The vending machine is now called Boxo. Boxo was scared. A bear was standing next to him. Boxo didn't understand what he needed. Lummies said it was the chairman of the Hunter's Society. He came to the sales apparatus, which is well known to everyone. Boxo didn't like it. The chairman of the Society of Hunters told about the trip to the Den of Frogs. He wants to take Boxo with him so that he can provide everyone with food on the way. Lummies asked if Boxo agreed. He agreed, because frogs can threaten Lummies as well. Thus, the chairman of the Hunter's Society agreed with them and they went camping. The bear said that the main task would be to protect the teleport team. Teleport allows you to move from the underground lake of pure flow to other levels. Boxo was worried that the frogs would be very annoying because they were having a mating period. In addition, there are rumored to be more frogs than usual this year. The hunters made a halt. Lamise put on a boxo. 
a guy came up to her and told her not to worry, because they protect them from frogs. He decided to find out what kind of box everyone is talking about. The hunter decided to buy something. He got a product. He began to examine the bottle and said that such a package could not be drawn by hand. He was also surprised that the packaging could disappear by itself. The taste was great. The hunter asked how the goods were replenished. Lamise said she didn't know, but she had never seen a vending machine empty. Boxo became more and more interested in the guy. Captain Kirio called Philomena. Boxo was surprised that this guy was in charge here. The captain asked what Philomena thought of Boxo. She said she didn't feel the presence of magic. Philomena said that a piece of iron cannot have a blessing of special abilities. But Boxo has divine protection. The captain said he was counting on Boxo. The bear said that it was necessary to wait out the night in the camp. Boxo realized that this was his chance to get regular customers. He added noodles to the assortment because it's cold in the evening and in the morning. The hunters really liked the noodles. One of the customers became a Boxo security guard. Lamise met her. Boxo's new security guard is named Sway. In the evening, the bear approached Lamis. He said it would take three hours to get to the frog's lair. She needs to decide whether she stays or goes with the hunters. Lamise said she was a hunter and would go, but Boxo wouldn't want to get into a fight. But Boxo agreed. Thus Lamis and Boxo will go to the den of frogs. Boxo vowed to protect Lamis, because she is his first customer and his first friend in this world. The air was very humid in the morning. Suddenly the bear noticed the enemy and ordered to attack. The captain said that the more enemies they kill, the more they earn. Lamis has a problem with accuracy, so Boxo was worried about her. But she hit the enemy the first time. Boxo thought it was easier for her to keep her balance with him on her back. Boxo was happy to help Lamis. Meanwhile, the hunters were fighting frogs. But there were a lot of enemies. Philomena said they couldn't handle the frogs. The captain said to fight on. Lamis noticed that Sway was being attacked by a frog and covered her with her body. Boxo activated his shield, which threw the frog away. Sway and Lamis didn't understand whose power it was. Boxo has a very small field of view, so he decided to increase it by 1,000 points. Lamis asked Boxo to warn when there will be enemies behind. The captain praised Lamis and she was embarrassed. Because of this, she didn't hear Boxo's warning. He had to activate the shield again. Boxo didn't like that the captain looked at him suspiciously. The hunters defeated all the frogs. Philomena asked the captain to help cut out the tongues, but he said that he became a captain to avoid such work. The captain said that you can go to the front line and earn more money. Philomena said that their task is to protect Boxo and Lamis. The captain said that you can lose the bonus if you don't go further. Philomena agreed to continue the hike, but only if Lamis goes too. Boxo didn't like the idea. Lamis began to be asked if she was ready. Lamis agreed. Boxo also agreed, because he needs to protect Lamis. The hunters started fighting the frogs again. Lamise noticed the wounded and decided that they needed to be moved to a safe place. Boxo was sad that he was useless. But suddenly he came up with the idea that he could distribute sports drinks. At this time, a bear came up. He said he expected nothing less from eccentric buffoons. Boxo thought it was a strange name for a group of hunters. The bear thanked the captain and said that there were a lot more frogs than usual. The bear assumed that the frog king had returned. 
He asked the captain to help if the Frog King appeared. The bear asked Lamis to take care of the wounded. In the evening Lamis said she would go to bandage the hunter's wounds for a while. Boxo thought they were like a guy with a girl. Suddenly, a man with a screwdriver approached the vending machine. Boxo thought the man wanted to steal his money. Boxo scared him off with a sound and gave him a drink. And when the man began to pick him up, he threw a hot product on his hand. The man got angry and pulled out a knife, but Lamis stopped him. He was tied up and left lying in the camp. Suddenly, the Frog King appeared. Lamis got scared and decided to run away with Boxo. But the animals were also scared and could not carry the cart. Lamis let them go and said she would drive the cart herself. As they drove, Boxo thought about what he should do. He was looking for a product that could stall for time. Boxo gave drinks to everyone in the cart. He changed his shape. Boxo was trying to explain his plan by sound. He was sad that he could not speak. The bound man woke up and started screaming. A Boxo product was shoved into his mouth. A soda was poured into his mouth and a reaction occurred. Lummies understood what to do. She asked the hunters for help. Together they attacked the frog. Meanwhile, help came. The Frog King was defeated. The Boxo has returned to its former form. The bear apologized to Lamis for putting them in danger. After that, everyone went to the village. The hunters were returning home from the nest of the frogs. Suddenly, at the side of the village, they saw smoke. The bear apologized for having to ask for help again. Lamis was worried about the mistress. Boxo was very supportive of Lamis, but he could not speak. Boxo used one of his voice commands to support her. When they arrived, the village was burned. Boxo noticed that something was dragged on the ground. Lamis noticed that the hotel burned down. Boxo began using voice commands to keep her from going inside the hotel. Lamis calmed down, because the mistress could have escaped. She was trying to figure out where they might be hiding. That could be the hunter's society. There she was met by the guards. They said all her friends are in the building and Lamis has calmed down. The village is in the middle of the maze and can defend itself. Manami and the mistress came out of the building. Boxo was used to all people and was afraid to lose them. Today he wanted to give out products for free. In the evening, everyone celebrated the victory over the two-headed monster. Boxo was surprised that the inhabitants ate the defeated snake. Boxo had a lot of clients and he was excited to make a lot of money tomorrow. After the celebration, Lamis went to Boxo and said she was pleased with the successful completion of the mission. She is also glad that no one was hurt. Lamis said that Boxo had become an integral part of their village. Boxo was surprised that Lamis thought so of him. Meanwhile, she fell asleep. In the morning Boxo expected many customers. Guards and hunters could become them. Lamis came to Boxo and told about a special task from a bear. She needs to clean the streets of the garbage. Lamis came to help Manami and the mistress. The workers came to them. They saw Boxo and said they could buy something from a reasonable box. Lamis broke the stone with her hand and put it in the cart. The workers were surprised by this force. It turned out that Lamis had a blessing in power. Boxo said that if she was assigned more hard work, she would be treated better. The captain came to the workers and allowed them to buy what they want from Boxo. Lamis began to choose. But the mistress suggested her to choose the most expensive. The captain approached Lamis and asked her to join the squad. But she refused. 
The workers did not understand why she did not want to join such a cool group. Lamy said that now it is necessary to rebuild the village. Later, buyers came to Boxo. A girl named Akui tried to communicate with him. She works at the exchange office, and she came because she heard there was a shortage of silver coins at that level. Lamy said that this is because Boxo only accepts silver coins. Akui asked Boxo to exchange gold coins for silver ones. But Boxo did not have this feature. Lamis decided to try something to buy a gold coin. Silver coins were dealt. At this time, the boy was walking and noticed Boxo giving out silver coins. Akui said she didn't want to spend much time with Boxo and she would come in a few days. Lamis said that Boxo was rich and needed to watch him. Later, an old man came to Boxo who played the lottery. He lost. Boxo added this feature and it increased profits by 30%. The old man had one last try left, but his wife dragged him away. Lamis asked Boxo to stay here and wait for the scientist to arrive. He agreed. The bear approached them and asked them to come to the association. The chairman thanked them for their help. The bear said he wanted to talk to Boxo. He asked me to leave them alone. The bear said he was hoping for Boxo, because they needed to provide the population with food. The chairman also said that he was afraid of spreading diseases among people. Boxo understood why the bear asked Lamis to leave. Shirley entered the room. She said that the influx of people into the village could spread disease. Boxo knew how to solve the problem and changed his form. So Boxo had a new product. Shirley began to study the subject. She read the manual and understood how it worked. When Lamis carried Boxo away, she noticed that it was hot. In the afternoon, a girl always came to Boxo. One day she took a bunch of rocks with her. He frightened her with the voice team and took her away. Today she came again. Boxo gave her an orange drink. The girl thanked Boxo. In the evening, Lamis went to the bath. Boxo was awkward when she changed. Boxo gave Lamis a liquid hair cleaner. Animals came to the vending machine. They wanted a cleaner for the fur. After the bath Lamis and Shirley drank cold drinks. The old man explained to the girl how the machine works. To win the lottery, you need three identical numbers. At this time, the older daughter is standing next to her and apologizes for the fact that she left the house. Suddenly, the girl wins the lottery. The old man was surprised. The girl gave the old man water. He said that unfortunately the good day was coming to an end. The girl said she was happy to spend the day with her family anyway. Boxo specially staged the lottery to please the girl and the old man. The next morning, a representative came to Boxo. He heard that Boxo can disguise himself as an environmentalist. The bear asked Boxo to trace who would commit the crime. Boxo began to watch, when suddenly Lamis called him. But Manami said that Boxo borrowed a bear. Lamis worked for the Hunters Association. She thought Boxo had become very popular. Sari and Lamis met in the evening. Sari called Boxo a fool and Lamis a monster with big breasts. Sari asked if Lamis had thought about her offer. She wanted to buy Boxo. But Lamis said that she would not trade Boxo and that it is not her property. Then Sari asked who Boxo really is. Lamis said she thought he was human. Boxo was grateful to Lamis that she thought he was human. Sari said that one day she will get Boxo. But Lamis said that he is not here and let her go home. Lamis noticed that Sari was talking more often. Suddenly Boxo appeared. 
Lamis began to tell what interesting happened that day.